Today I'm going to show you how to do a very cool simple card trick. Uh, all you need is 15 playing cards and basically it's a trick you can kind of add to and take away from yourself. So uh, I'll give you the basic steps and some ways to make it a bit more, a bit cooler. But uh, it's so simple that anyone can do it and then after that it depends on how much sleight of hand you want to use to make it look even better. Uh, it's all based on very basic math so uh, what you'll first need is 15 playing cards, just regular cards, you don't need any kind of special cards. And then uh, the first step is to ask the person to choose a card. So uh, what's well, a simple one here for you to see? So let's just go with the Ace of Clubs. Let's just say that you showed them the cards like this and you say just remember a card. Like they don't have to touch it or anything, just tell them remember a card. So let's just say that they remembered the Ace of Spades. It doesn't really matter to you at any point what they actually pick because you're never even going to see it before you show them which card is theirs, but it's pretty cool. So uh, they're remembering the Ace of Spades. So then you take your 15 cards and you lay them down in three rows. Doesn't matter how you lay them down, just five in each row. And then once you do that, you take the first row and ask them if their card is in that pile. So let's see, is the ace of spades in here? No, it's not. So they're gonna say, no, it's not in that pile. So then you take the next pile and you take a look at it. And you ask them, is your card in that pile? And as you can see here, the Ace of Clubs is right there, so it is in that pile. But it doesn't matter us what card it is in the pile, so they're, they're going to say yes, it is in that pile. So then you take that pile, and you can put it really anywhere in the deck, but I'd say put it on top, because the next step I show you, like, the idea is that it's on top. Uh, but in the future you can customize this yourself and put it anywhere you want. So the next step, and this is important, it matters where you lay out, like, how you lay out the cards. So at this point, I know their card is one of these top five cards. I don't necessarily know that it is actually this one, but the idea behind it is that I know it's one of these cards. I've already eliminated ten cards with just one question right there. So now, out of these top five cards, you're going to put them in three rows again, just like you did last time. But now, see, there's going to be three rows and you do it sideways. So now, I did it sideways like that, I put one card in each, and I'm going to put another card. So right now, I know that their card is one of these five cards on the table. So that's going to make it simpler the next time I ask a question. So then we'll continue just like that. And like if you had put the deck in the middle, the split in the middle, instead on the last turn, then their card would have been one of these five cards. But just for the basic, to keep it basic, I'm going to leave it as the top one on this. So now, you get to ask me again if their card isn't which card their pile is in. Uh, so when you ask them, is your card in this pile, they're going to say yes, because it's right here. Now, at this point, we know that their card is one of these two cards, because these were the cards that were on top right here, and we knew it was one of those five cards. So now, we know it's one of two cards. So I usually put those on top right here, and then you can take away all the piles. As soon as they say, yes, my card is in that pile, then we know uh, which one it is. If they had chosen the last pile, there's only one. Each This one has two cards, and this one has two cards from the five, but this only has one. So if they had said it is in that pile, then you instantly know that it's one of those cards. It, exactly which card it is. It was the first card. But since they chose one that has two from the stack of five, then we're not sure which one of those two it is. So right now, I know that their card is one of these two top cards. As you can see, it is the second card right here, but it doesn't really matter to me which one it actually is. It's just I know it's one of the two top cards. So I'm going to do it again, and I know that their card is one of these two cards. So if they say, yes, my card is in this pile this time, then I know their card is this one. And if they say, yes, my card is in this pile for this row, then I know their card is this one. So we'll continue going like we're going to. And the faster you do this, the better it'll look, and the more amazing it will seem. So there I have my three piles. So then I ask him again, is your card in this pile? As you can see, it's not in this pile. So now I instantly know that their card is right here. So if you want to, you can ask them again and say, is your card in this pile? But you don't have to because you already know that their card is this card. So um, if you want to, you can just not even ask them again and just know it's that card. And what I do is I put it on the top of the pile of the top of the five. So now I know it's this card. And then what I do is I usually put it in the middle of the cards. If you wanted to right now, you could say, is this your card? And they would be probably a little amazed, but we're going to make it so that it's a little cooler than that for the, the final reveal, I guess. So you're going to have your 
stack here that has the card on top of it. I usually put it in the middle. So I know that their card is the sixth card in the pile right now. So now you want to give them a choice. That's what's really amazing in Magic is when the person thinks that they had some, like, uh, something to do with the outcome. And that's what we're going to do here. So what I usually do is make these little kind of man figures here. So you can see there's five cards there. This is their card right here. I remembered it already. So, uh, so just keep an eye on which one was actually their card. So I know it's the top corner of this guy. You can do it however you want, but uh, so then I have five there. And again, I know this is their card. And then I have another stack of five over here. Now you ask them to choose two piles. Now that's where you give them a choice because if they'll think that they're affecting the outcome when they're really not. Because if they choose these two piles, then you know the card is right here. So you want to throw away this pile. In. But if they choose this pile and this pile, then you throw away these two piles and you keep this one. So you give them a choice, but it really doesn't affect anything. So let's just say they chose these two piles. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. And they're gonna be like, wow, like in their heads, they're gonna be thinking, how did he do that? Like, how does he know that my card isn't in that pile? So then at this point, uh, I'm gonna do this really slowly so that you can see it, but normally you would want to do this in a really in a way that they don't really see what you're doing. Uh, I know that their card is this one right now, at the bottom of this pile right here, and then there's four cards on top of it, and then there's this other stack of five cards. So what I do is I take these five cards, and I know their card is this one right now, but we're gonna put a bit more of a reveal in it. So I believe it's sticking out just a teeny bit, uh, enough to like clamp it in your finger like this, but you want to make sure to do it without them seeing it because if they see it then they'll think you're up to something and you don't want them to think you're up to something. So then you stick it on top of the other pile or if you only have this one pile left at this point, like if you got rid of two piles, then you can put this one in kind of the middle of the pile there. But so stack it on top of the other one and then leave this one sticking out a little bit enough to clamp them in your fingers, but you have this one tight in your finger while you have the rest of them kind of loose. So, just trying to... Normally I can do this a bit faster here, but just for sake of showing you, like, see I have this one kind of clamped in my hand right here, it's the one sticking out, while the other ones are loose. Now you karate chop the pile. Sorry, I wasn't really looking at what I was doing. Uh, so, you want to practice that a bit, so you can get it in one chop, get all the cards out of your hand, and then you just have this one card left, and you're like, is this your card? And to them it'll be pretty amazing. Uh, let me try that again, so that, uh, that you can see what a good karate chop would look like. Um, so if you had the cards in your hand, you can leave them a bit messed up to make it look better too, but you want to be kind of like that. Be like, is that your card? But, uh, yeah, so it'll take a bit of sleight of hand, and at any point you could have shown them their card, and they would have still been pretty amazed, but the more you add to it, the better it seems. And so, uh, just practice it a bit. Practice on your siblings or parents or whatever and after a little bit then you can make it look really really cool, really realistic. What I did there wasn't wasn't very quick. You can do that whole trick in less than 30 seconds mostly, so uh, definitely just practice it and you'll get it. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe, leave me any comments if you have any questions, and uh, just have fun.